I recently got a dash cam and installed it in my car. Uh, it turns out that advancing camera technology has come quite a long way and uh, even quite sophisticated levels of imaging have now trickled down to the very low end of the market so to speak meaning that even a cheap car camera can do a pretty good job of reliably recording events. What you're seeing here is recorded on a VFO A119S uh, which I chose as a likely contender for the best mid-range camera currently available uh, and I reviewed that separately. I'll put up a link to uh, to that review. Anyway, this particular camera is USB powered. Uh, it comes with a cigarette lighter style adapter. There are pros and cons to these USB powered devices. The uh, pro is that they're very simple. They use standard USB type hardware. Uh, but it means that there has to be this separate external power supply to drop and regulate the car's 12 volts down to 5. Uh, and it also uh, has some ramifications for a dash cam because it precludes the proper implementation of a parking mode. Uh, that's because the camera has no access to the car's ignition circuit, so it can't really tell which mode to put itself into. So out of the box, uh, you could just use the lighter adapter, and uh, this is what most users presumably do. Uh, the problem is you have your, your lighter always occupied if you do that, and you also have this cable to deal with, and obviously you could try to tuck it out of the way, but you know, frankly it's always going to be a nuisance. The other problem with using the lighter socket is sort of related to the parking mode issues I just touched on. Uh, many cars will retain power to their lighter sockets uh, for a while after the car's ignition is cut and uh, even after the car's locked you know up to say one hour um, you can see that this is still running and recording uh, even though the engine's off <clears throat> if i shut the door and lock the car it's still recording the wall uh, and will continue to do so at the full frame rate and video bandwidth you know, both draining the car's battery and overwriting actual driving footage on the memory card. So um, what I'm going to do is show you one way of hardwiring up a camera like this so that it turns on and off with the car, uh, so that it's just active and recording when driving, uh, without having to rewire the cigarette lighter or anything like that, and so that all the cables are completely hidden and safely out of the way. All right, the very first thing you want to do when wiring in any accessory like this is decide exactly where it's going to go, as that will dictate where the wires need to be. A dash cam obviously wants to go at the top of the windscreen, and uh, one thing you need to pay attention to is uh, making sure that the camera is looking through the wiped section of the glass. So the way most wipers are set up, um, that usually rules out the passenger side of the windscreen. Now you can see here that it's no good over there as that bit of glass is not cleared of rainwater or you know cleaned by the wipers, so the picture would be very bad. On the other hand, uh, you probably don't want it at the driver's side either because it'll obstruct the driver's view, depending on the vehicle of course, larger vans or trucks, you might get away with that. So now I'm looking at uh, placing it behind the rear vision mirror and ultimately that's the solution for me. Uh, but there are still some complications. Firstly, it won't actually fit in that space to the driver's side on my car. There's just not enough room to jam it up high enough. Um, and I don't want to move it lower because it'll be more obvious from the outside. And I prefer it to be, let's say, uh, subtle, visually speaking. And the second issue is if you happen to have a auto dimming mirror, you need to make sure that you don't occlude the front facing light sensor because otherwise the mirror will think it's darker than it is all the time and it'll be messed up. Okay, so for me that left the uh, passenger side behind the mirror uh, where it fits quite nicely and then you just need to make sure to leave enough space such that you can see the screen and operate the buttons as you need to. I wouldn't say these need to be exactly at your fingertips all the time while driving uh, but you, you, know, you wouldn't want them to be completely inaccessible. Okay, so then the camera can be mounted. The A119 uses double-sided tape for its mounts, uh, which can be messy and requires you to get it right the first time, uh, but there's not the extra bulk that a suction pad mount would require. 
Um, I can also mount this at the windscreen tint at the top, which further hides the camera a little bit. Although obviously you must make sure that the camera lens has a view that is clear below any windscreen tint. So here's mine installed. Uh, as this zooms out, I'm just backing off the polarizing filter that you were looking through. Uh, and you can see in more natural light that the dash cam really uh, fades into something not very obvious. This doesn't stand out too much. So good. Right, onto the wiring. Here's what I'm going to be using to power the camera as an alternative to the lighter socket. It's a uh, dual USB adapter rated to 3.1 amps total, which is um, way more than enough. The second plug will allow me to easily add another USB device in the future if I want to, like a rear dash cam. Uh, and it has this uh, waterproof cover, which I'll cut off as it's not required. It's a nice solid unit and it has this cable which terminates in an SAE connector. Obviously you could cut that off if, and do what you like, um, but I'm going to use it as it will prove convenient. Uh, because for the next wiring stage, I just bought this cable, a uh, pre-made thing which is labeled a uh, battery terminal cable. But really it's just a cable with another SAE plug, this time for the hot side on the one end and uh, ring terminals on the other. Now I won't be using the positive terminal, but I will use the ground ring, so that's uh, one less crimp that I have to do. And it also has this inline fuse, which is redundant for my purposes, but it doesn't hurt. And finally, I got this fuse tap, and this is a piggyback style tap, uh, which will allow me to pick a circuit from the car's internal fuse box and tap into it with uh, you know, no permanent modification to the car's wiring required. So this comes with fairly clear instructions on the back, as you can see. The idea is that you pull an existing fuse from the fuse box and uh, move it to the lower position in the tap, and then you add a second fuse for your new circuit in the top position, install it the right way around, and you have 12 volts from the tap wire. And it conveniently comes with a uh, you know, a crimp to crimp connector ready for bare wire to go into it. So the plan is we go from the fuse tap to the intermediary cable with its terminals and plugs, to the USB power supply via a USB cable, to the camera. Easy. I'll put some links to these things below. Um, obviously you can wire this up a thousand different ways. I'm just showing you here one example that will require only one crimp uh, no soldering, no permanent changes to the car, and because of the separable components, is very easily altered or upgraded in the future. Now let's put all this hardware in the car then and uh, connect it up. Firstly, to use a fuse tap, yeah, you, you'll access um, the vehicle's interior fuse box. So on this Mondeo right-hand drive, it's behind the glove box, so I needed to remove that. Easy enough. And then you have open access to all the fuses. Uh, next, you're going to need to run the cabling up to the roof. So you'll need to pull off the A-pillar trim. That's usually not too complicated. The uh, clips just disconnect with sufficient force in this Mondeo. Um, if you have side curtain airbags, you will need to pay attention to that, as there may be more complicated clips or some extra wiring and connectors to worry about. I should have said before, uh, make sure the car's ignition is turned off um, and you could disconnect the battery negative even uh, if you feel the need to. And try of course not to damage anything. So here this one's off and if you look closely here you can actually see the factory wiring running up there. Uh, that's the loom for the courtesy lights. I'm going to add my cable parallel to that. And talking about the courtesy lights, I'm going to need to take my front one out as I'll uh, need to um, do that in order to stow away the USB adapter in the space which is uh, generally available around its enclosure. And by the way, before you ask uh, why not just tap into the courtesy light power feed, the answer is that they're on the same remain on for one hour circuit that I was talking about before, so they're no good. When you have access to all the car spaces that you'll need access to, you can get your cabling ready to go in. Now in my case, all I need to do is uh, join my fuse tap to the downstream wiring, 
which in my case is this uh, Terminal 2 SAE cable that I bought. So to do crimps you'll obviously need a crimping tool, strip the wire bare, and here I'm using the uh, existing crimp connector that came pre-attached to the fuse tap. And obviously you can solder if you prefer, but I like crimps if they're done properly. And whatever you do, this is a positive uh, feed, obviously, so make sure that you have no exposed wires, no possibility of a short circuit. Good. Now, to complete this part of the cable, we need to add a fuse. Uh, this is just a little 5 amp fuse that I got, which is about right for the 3.1 max supply of the uh, USB adapter I'm using. Then finally you should check your work at this point, both the connections, uh, check that there's continuity from one end to the other, um, put the voltmeter on resistance and probe both ends of the positive side of this and you can see that we are good to go. This cable is going to be the dash side of the setup for me, so I'm feeding it down under the A pillar and into the dash, uh, letting it fall into the space above the fuse box and I can just reach up and grab it. So next we're going to install the fuse tap and before you do that obviously you need to know which fuse you want to use. So in the present case uh, you must avoid any fuse that provides permanent power uh, which is actually very common, a lot of fuses do. Most Many devices in a car are switched further down the circuit but the fuses remain live even with the ignition off. However there are always a number of ignition live only fuses, you just have to find them. Uh, and then there is the accessory circuit, which usually has at least one fuse relating to uh, the audio head unit. So you can poke around with a voltmeter to find those, uh, or look up the car's fuse diagrams, or you can you know, just get advice from somebody else who knows the car. Yeah, and anyway, um, in my case, I tracked down the accessory fuse for the head unit because I decided I wanted the dash cam to be operating when the ignition was turned to the accessory or ACC position uh, rather than requiring the engine to be running. Now this allows you to kill the engine yet keep recording if and when you want. So once you know the fuse you want, uh, pull it out and then insert the original fuse into the correct position on the tap. And then before inserting the tap into the fuse socket Remember it needs to go the correct way around, so you need to know which side of the fuse socket is the hot side, i.e. the uh, side that runs from the battery. So make sure that it has power. Uh, in the case of this ACC circuit that means the ignition needs to be at position 1, and then uh, use your voltmeter to find uh, which side is live. Now in my case it's the top, so the fuse tap needs to be inserted with the wire running downward. So do that and it'll look something like this. And sorry for the unclear picture here, it's very dark and awkward to film. Next we need to wire in the negative or ground side of the circuit, and we just need any grounded to chassis metal for that. Uh, you can drill and screw in your own, um, but hopefully you can find a convenient extant bolt to use. Uh, these bolts here are a bracket for the passenger side airbag, so I'm just going to undo this nut and the ring terminal of my ground wire fits over it perfectly. Uh, do up the nut again and just spray it with some electrical protective stuff because why not? Tighten it up and there's my tapped circuit ready. So you should stop again and uh, check the voltage at this point. Again with the ignition at the correct position you'll have to use position 2 if you're not using the accessory circuit like me. Uh, just stick the voltmeter in the plug or wires um, and confirm that you're getting 12 volts like you expect. And this will check everything upstream, obviously the fuse tap, the ground connection and the wiring all together. Now we can move on and it's time for the USB adapter to go in. So I'm going to get it up in the headliner first, uh, bearing in mind that the USB socket itself is too big to go feeding through narrow gaps. So I'm pulling the cable here through out the front until the adapter block is pulled up into the courtesy light space and then I'm just tucking the cable behind the headliner from the top of the windscreen. And then the remaining cable will go down behind the A-pillar soon. Then the adapter block needs to be put home out of the way and uh, finally we need the USB cable to go from the adapter to the camera. And as you can see I'm just using a very short cable here, one that was supplied with the camera more for connecting to a PC I think. 
uh, but I don't want meters of slack left over. So it goes uh, from the adapter, which is uh, going to live right next to the courtesy light, straight forward and out neatly into the back of the camera mount. Perfect. All that's left now to do for the cabling is to join the two SAE plugs together. You can see here how that fuse box tap wire that I rigged up earlier is terminating in this convenient plug here. Uh, this is partly why I did it like this, because of the uh, modular nature of this setup. I can now replace or rewire any part of it uh, later without having to pull out everything. Anyway, now we're done with the electrics. Uh, just need to replace the A-pillar trim. Uh, making sure the new cabling is securely at home and kept from interfering with the clips. Then the fuse box access can be closed back up. In my case, that's the glove box to be put back in. And last but not least, the courtesy light can be clipped back in. And uh, not a single wire is left visible, except for the very neat one inch of USB cable, which goes straight to the camera. And you'll have a hardwired dash cam. As I explained, I've rigged mine up to the accessory circuit, so I don't need to turn the ignition on fully to get it going. Uh, position 1, and I've got a camera recording. Turn the ignition off completely, and it switches off once its capacitor drains. And that is one way to install a USB-powered dash camera. So I hope that was helpful. Have fun.